Today is Friday, October 4th. We'll tell you about the tentative deal that ended the dock workers' strike after just three days, but when the issue could come back up again. Also, we've got the latest from the campaign trail, from a high-profile Republican endorsement for Harris to Trump's plan to go back to the spot he was shot in the ear. Plus, which country music star has been accused of sexual assault? Why Texas is suing TikTok? And how businesses big and small are helping hurricane victims? Those stories and even more news to know coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. A historic U.S. port strike from Maine to Texas has come to an end, and dock workers are back at work, at least for now. The strike has been suspended until early next year. It's thanks to a tentative agreement on wages and a promise to return to the bargaining table to negotiate all the other issues. Various news outlets cite sources who say port employers sweeten their offer for pay raises from 50 percent to a 62 percent increase in wages over six years. So now they've all agreed to extend the current contract through at least January 15th while the rest gets worked out. The dock workers' strike lasted three days, impacting more than half of the nation's container imports and exports that flow through the East and Gulf Coast ports. Reports say the White House privately and publicly pressed port employers to make a new offer to the union. President Biden applauded the agreement, saying in a statement, quote, collective bargaining works and is critical to building a stronger economy from the middle out and the bottom up. A longer work stoppage of several weeks or months could have caused major delays in shipping as well as product shortages and even caused more inflation for some goods. But it seems, for now anyway, that's not happening. It was a mixed verdict for three former Memphis police officers charged in the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols last year. All three were found guilty of federal witness tampering, but they were all acquitted of the more serious charge of violating Nichols' civil rights by causing his death. One of them, though, was still convicted on a lesser charge of violating his civil rights by causing bodily injury. The judge ordered all of them to be taken into custody. A hearing next week will determine if they can be released until their sentencing in January. The verdicts come nearly two years after police body cam video captured police punching and kicking Tyree Nichols, who was black, and hitting him with a police baton after he ran away from a traffic stop. He later died. Prosecutors said the officers beat him excessively for running and then lied about the extent of force they used. Nichols' mother said she's glad they were all convicted. Two other officers involved reached plea deals before that trial and testified against their former colleagues. One of them tearfully apologized. All five men still face second-degree murder charges in state court. A former Colorado County clerk who promoted 2020 election conspiracy theories has now been sentenced to nine years in prison. The former clerk was found guilty of tampering with voting machines that were under her control in a failed attempt to prove they had been used to rig the 2020 election. The sentence was the first to be handed down against a local election official in cases like this across the country. Attempts to illegally access voting machines in search of evidence happened as former President Donald Trump and his allies were spreading disproven claims that the election was stolen. The ex-clerk still says she did nothing wrong. She said she was trying to protect the people in her county and trying to preserve information to make sure the election was secure. But the judge told her, quote, you are no hero. You abused your position. Well, former President Trump continued to say he actually won the 2020 election and that it was rigged while speaking at a rally in Michigan yesterday, despite courts and election officials from both parties saying that's not true. It's those types of claims and the January 6th Capitol riot that seem to be some of the main reasons former Representative Liz Cheney is now campaigning alongside Vice President Kamala Harris. Cheney is the highest-profile Republican to endorse Harris. The once unlikely pair spoke together in the symbolic birthplace of the Republican Party yesterday, Ripon, Wisconsin. Both of them spoke of putting the country over party to preserve American democracy. Cheney emphasized she's still a conservative, even as she forcefully rejected Trump. In response, the Trump campaign blasted the records of both women, calling Cheney a loser who is desperate for attention and Harris a failed, dangerous liberal. At his rally in Michigan, Trump said he would make Michigan the car capital of the world again. He also said the White House has nearly no money to deal with Hurricane Helene because they spent it all on illegal migrants, even though the federal government has announced new resources in recent days to help Hurricane Helene victims. FEMA confirmed it does have the funds for immediate response and recovery efforts. But the Homeland Security Secretary did warn its funding is down for the rest of the hurricane season. Today, Vice President Harris is set to be in Michigan, 
And on Saturday, former President Trump will return to Butler, Pennsylvania, the same location of the first assassination attempt in July. He said he'll, quote, finish our speech. He'll also honor the man killed in that shooting as well as those injured. Polls continue to show an extremely tight race between Harris and Trump. And this Sunday is the first voter registration deadline in some states. All right, more news is still ahead. But first, a quick break to thank our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Quince. I admit it, I love pumpkin spice lattes along with beautiful, colorful leaves in the fall. You know what else I love this season? Cozy cashmere sweaters from Quince, starting at just $50. And here's the best part. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories and cutting out the cost of the middleman, Quince is able to pass the savings on to us. And that's true for my other favorite items from Quince, like the organic cotton knit blazer I have. It's super comfortable, yet sophisticated. I can throw it on over my washable silk tank from Quince or another top with jeans and heels and feel like my best self. And it's perfect for this time of year as we transition from summer to fall and the always changing weather calls for layers. I also love that Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. And of course, premium fabrics and finishes for that luxury feel in every piece. Get cozy in Quince's high-quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash newsworthy for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash newsworthy to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to the news. Two of the most popular weight loss drugs on the market are no longer in short supply. But that actually means in some cases, people may have a harder time getting the drugs. The FDA said yesterday the U.S. officially has enough tirzepatide to meet demand. It's the main ingredient in Eli Lilly's blockbuster diabetes and weight loss drugs, Monjaro and Zepbound, which have become so popular in the last couple of years that it's created shortages. Now, the FDA's announcement means third-party pharmacies can no longer produce cheaper off-brand versions called compounded drugs. Compounded drugs don't have to be approved by the FDA. They're made by special pharmacies that try to recreate name brand drugs. They're usually sold online and direct to consumers. They've become more popular in part because it's been so hard to get the brand name versions. A representative for compounding pharmacies, though, said now many people taking them may have to scramble to find alternatives. All that said, the ability of pharmacies to make their own versions of other popular diabetes and weight loss drugs, Ozempic and Wagovi, are not affected. Those use a different active ingredient that's still considered to be in short supply. One of the biggest country music stars of all time has been accused of sexual assault. A lawsuit filed in California claims Garth Brooks raped and sexually assaulted a makeup artist who worked for Brooks and his wife, fellow country star Trisha Yearwood. The accuser is anonymous, but the lawsuit says she started working for Brooks in 2017 after working for Yearwood since 1999. She says after Brooks made several unwanted sexual advances, he booked a hotel room for the two of them in Los Angeles in 2019, and that's where the alleged rape happened. Brooks hasn't responded to the allegations at this point, but the accuser's lawsuit also claims that he actually sued her in Mississippi before this, claiming that she was trying to extort him for money. The accuser says he was trying to intimidate her. But at this point, no one in that Mississippi lawsuit is actually named since they all stayed anonymous. So it's not certain if Brooks was really behind it. To be continued. Well, the state of Texas is suing TikTok. The state's attorney general is accusing the social media app of failing to protect children and putting their online safety and privacy at risk. The lawsuit specifically says the social media giant shares minors' personal information to advertisers and anyone searching public profiles without permission from a parent or legal guardian. And that violates a new state law that went into effect last month meant to secure children's information online. The lawsuit seeks up to $10,000 for each violation of that state law. TikTok, though, is saying it strongly disagrees, saying the company provides many safeguards for both parents and children, including the ability to pair a minor's account with an adult's, and parents can ask TikTok to delete a child's account. Social media platforms have increasingly come under scrutiny for how they handle minors' accounts, Parent groups have lobbied Congress for years to enact nationwide laws. And recently, Instagram updated its platform to make teen accounts private by default. Well, it's that time. Early holiday shopping season is almost here. And online retailer Amazon is gearing up to meet the demand. The company says it's planning to hire 250,000 workers to help with the holiday rush. 
Some of the jobs included will be full-time, but many are temporary or seasonal jobs. A lot of the seasonal workers will focus on the various stages of getting items out to customers, taking advantage of holiday shopping deals. So these employees will work in warehouses, customer fulfillment, and transportation. It's actually the same number of extra workers Amazon hired last year for the holidays. Target is also hiring the same number of extra workers as last year, which is about 100,000. Though others, like Macy's, say they'll be slightly scaling back their hiring this year. Of course, the holidays are the busiest time for retail sales. And it's all kicking off next week with Amazon's Prime Big Deal Days, Target's Next Circle Week, and more. Well, that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, this episode of The Newsworthy is brought to you by Wild Grain. This fall, treat yourself and your loved ones to fresh, bake-from-frozen sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries, as well as limited-time seasonal items like apple cider donuts from Wild Grain. Wild Grain's boxes are fully customizable. You've got the classic variety box, then they recently launched a new gluten-free box and a plant-based box that is 100% vegan. As soon as I started pulling items out of our Wild Grain box, my husband started ooing and aahing with excitement. I'm talking slow-fermented olive oil sabata, large flaky croissants, fresh fettuccine, giant chocolate chunk cookies, and more. And we seriously impressed our guests the other day by putting out this beautiful, delicious loaf of bread. Yes, they had no idea how easy it was for me. Get this, all items bake from frozen in 25 minutes or less with no mess or cleanup. It's amazing. Are you ready to bring all your favorite carbs right to your doorstep? For a limited time, Wild Grain is offering our listeners $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash newsworthy to start your subscription. That's wildgrain.com slash newsworthy or you can use the promo code newsworthy at checkout. Okay, now back to Feel Good Friday. And today we're focusing on how people are helping people in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. On top of the individual acts of heroism and kindness we've seen over the last week, dozens of businesses, big and small, have gone out of their way to help affected communities. Airbnb, for example, has offered free temporary housing to anyone whose home was destroyed or made uninhabitable by Helene. And home improvement stores like Home Depot and Lowe's have donated millions of dollars, plus supplies like generators, chainsaws, and dehumidifiers to help the recovery effort. Home Depot is based in Georgia, and Lowe's is headquartered in North Carolina, and Helene hit both those states hard. Retail giant Walmart is also chipping in with millions in donations and said it will match donations to the Red Cross. It's also providing supplies like bottled water, food, and other essentials. A whole list of local businesses in the regions impacted have also been helping— A Virginia brewery, for example, is collecting blankets, hygiene kits, and more, while a nearby junk removal company will transport donations for free to western North Carolina, where they're especially needed. There's also a candle maker in Sparta, North Carolina, who has donated hundreds of candles to those without power, literally bringing light into the world during a dark time. We'll repost links to some of the places you can donate if you want to help as well. Nonprofits like the American Red Cross, World Central Kitchen, and Convoy of Hope are also doing incredible work to help communities impacted. Well, thank you so much for listening today. We'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode. We'll go in-depth on the vice presidential debate between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls, getting analysis from both sides of the aisle. Then we'll be back with another news roundup on Monday. For now, have a great weekend. 